Hello, I want to talk to you church leaders um, about um, things that may be concern, concerning you. Um, perhaps you lost um, some control in your church. Maybe you um, feel like you at your wit's end. Uh, maybe con a congregant's been leaving and you wonder why. Um, there could be... Um, or maybe you just lost your relationship with Christ and maybe you don't hear from him anymore. Okay, now I want to talk to you about how to get that back. Okay, how do you get that relationship back? How do you get control of your church if it's been chaotic? Okay, how do you get your members back? Or other members back? Okay, so let's talk about that. Um, Let's talk about relationship with Yeshua first. Okay. Maybe, uh, you know, in the beginning, you know how you was on fire for the Lord. And you maybe was hearing from the Lord real good. And, and you wonder what happened over time. You know, um, you're not hearing what everybody else is hearing. Your church is not growing. Uh, you only have a limited amount of information to give them. And so you're wondering, what is going on? Why I'm not hearing from the Lord? Okay. First, first of all. Um, the Christian would be to you is this are you living in sin okay are you um, misleading his flock are you sleeping around in the church so that would be number one and, and if so repent okay um, another question would be are you spending enough time with God meaning are you spending are you watching four hours of football game and not spend that much time with the Lord? You see what I'm saying? Um, so spend time with the Lord. Um, ask Him questions. But most of all, listen. Okay? And if you, um, and make sure you have the Holy Spirit in you. Because you know what? If you've been messing around, sleeping around, and doing all kinds of craziness, and then you just try to get back on the right track, and you haven't, well, that is repenting. Getting back on the right track is repenting. But however, it's, it's possible the Holy Spirit had left you. So you need to um, rededicate your life to Christ. And it has to ask the Holy Spirit to come into you. You know? Um, because, you know, we, we, when sin comes in, the Holy Spirit goes out. <laughs> okay? Because, because you know, light and darkness do, just do not... Just do not combine like that. You know what I mean? Because because the Holy Spirit is holy. You know. You, you know. She wants you to remain holy. It's important to remain holy. Okay. So um. So get on your knees. Humble yourself. Humble yourself, and seek God. Okay. Just you know and you know. I have to ask. I mean, rededicate. Ask the Holy Spirit come in. Rededicate yourself to Christ. And um and just say, Lord, you know, where I've been missing, ask him questions, Lord, where I've been missing it, you know, help me get back on the right track. See, man can't do it for you. I can't give you the answers that you probably expected me to give you. Because all answers is found in Yeshua, God the Father, and Holy Spirit. Okay? But you must be connected with them. You must be in order to get back on the right track. Okay, so that's how you get your relationship back. Talk to him. Tell him your concerns. And if you don't know what to say, you know, just 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 humble yourself. Says, Lord, talk to me. Just tell me where I'm where I'm going wrong. Tell me where I messed up. And don't get off your knees until you hear an answer from the Lord. You hear me? Do not get off your knees until you. I don't care. Take I don't care. Care take an hour, two hours, three hours. Stay on your knees until you hear from the Lord. Just, just remain there. And you will hear. Okay? But also know that even fallen angels out there. The fallen angels can show up too and give you a false answer. But just know that in the, whatever the Lord is going to say is going to be it's going to be according to His will. Which means it will be biblical. And you can find another situation like it in the Bible. Okay? More likely so. So just make sure that you, you wait for an answer. Okay. So maybe... Um, so maybe your relationship was okay, but maybe it's the power. Maybe the power left. You know, maybe the power left. Maybe you used to 
or touch people and maybe they used to get healed and you want to know what happened you know I mean you're not you're not seeing people get healed anymore you're not seeing the manifestation of God's power so what happened over time what happened well first of all let me ask you this do you believe in praying in the spirit do you really believe in the power of the Holy Ghost you know I mean, I mean have you lost your faith over time have doubt set in are you anointing people with oil like the word says or are you just going on your own thing do you make it about you or do you make it about Christ so there's some things you need because see, it's not see the Bible says pride comes before the fall so so you make sure that you, that you know you let your congregants know that it's not you that be healing them okay and it's God that's doing it but you are you are only as a vessel that he uses so that's the that's the main thing so to get the power back again as the Holy Spirit to come in and you repent first the first thing in everything you do repent and if you have repented uh, of the sins you know of ask God to reveal the things that maybe you don't know of maybe you have idols in, in your place and you don't know of you know I mean like there's some things that can creep in unaware you know Satan got his way he, he, he pretty tricky and he's clever he is clever very clever so so this Ask the Lord, well, okay, Lord, you know, I, I want the power back in the church. I, I want I want to see you move in the church. I, I want your presence to be in the church. Okay? First of all, let me say this to you leaders. Are you doing church like you used to do? I mean, is it the same old songs you used to sing all the time? Is it, I mean, are you are you putting a time limit on God? Are you, are you looking at your clock? timing how much time that you are putting in the service see you don't have time for God he's not gonna have time for you meaning what stop telling people what time you get out of church let the Holy Spirit move with many many leaders quench the Holy Spirit because soon okay, this this has been a revelation this is this is a revelation to a lot of you this is gonna gonna really help you okay it's really gonna help you when you have church, okay, when you have church, and first first of all, first you get in there, you get the praising, okay, you get the praising, okay, which is good, okay, everybody don't want to court, everybody praising, okay, this is, this is where you many mess up, okay, just when things get going real good, and everybody, and people started really feeling the power of God, a lot, lot of times you end up changing the song, bitch. If the song is working, that you're singing, if the people you see people really worshiping, keep that song going and going and going and going and going. Keep it going because more likely, because a lot of times, if 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 you if you bring in a song that that's working and you change it, what you're doing, you're changing, you're changing the atmosphere. Okay, if God have if God showed up in the, in an atmosphere. Which, which is a sound, a certain sound. You keep that sound. You keep it going. I mean, you could you could do it at a faster rate or slow rate, but no matter what, you keep that sound going. Okay, because that way, this when this when God really can move. But a lot a lot of leaders quench the spirit by keep changing song after song, and they and and once the spirit is there, they. They, they they change up you know you don't change up another thing I want to you know sometimes get rid of the hymn books you know sing your own songs to the Lord you know the Lord don't mind you sing someone else's song that came up with but but you know, like like who do you say he is who is he to you who is Christ to you sing that song Yes, yeah, sing that song. You been a leader, you can do that. You know, you don't have to sing a song that everybody know. You say, Lord, you are so good to me. Lord, you down the cross and set me free. And I 
appreciate you appreciate you god you are so good to me god you died on calvary you so good to me so good so good so good to me see that's the song i just came up with because you no know matter because god is so good to me so what how is it good to you See, just sing your own song, come up with something new. And you know what? It don't always have to be about music. And you know, I'm, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you some revelation. You know, sometimes people, you know, those drums get to go on. Sometimes you, those drums end up having a beat, having a beat like, um, like really music. You be really, really wise. Because why, why, why that beat going on, don't you know? A false spirit, an evil spirit could come in. And get on you and shake you and you thinking it's the Holy Ghost, which it may not be. I'm telling you, but I, I, I experienced. The Lord allowed me to experience this so I can teach you this. So some of you may be working in strange fire, which means, and, and of course, even people ain't going to be getting healed. You know what I'm saying? But thing is, though, you, you get the shaking and going on, but, no, but nobody being healed in your church after you pray for them. You could be, you could be, you could be. It could be the light, the uh, Leviathan spirit in your church. You hear what I'm saying to you? I'm telling you, this is the truth. It could be a Leviathan spirit in your church. It's a seducing spirit. It's a spirit of pride. And it's a spirit that we, we get on you and shake you. Do you, um, um, you know how some people have get Parkinson's disease and they, they shake? They get the shaking. Don't you know that could be an evil spirit on them? More like that's what it is. Okay? Because, you know, Parkinson's disease is not natural. An evil spirit gets on people and shake people. An evil spirit can get on your back, on your legs, and shake you. And you thinking, you, I'm telling you, you could be thinking it's the Holy Ghost. Okay? But will be on you may not be holy. Okay? We could give you a, it's, it's an artificial. Okay? It's trying to. Remember, the devil is a mimicker. The devil trying to um, copy God in any kind of way. Just like speaking in tongues. You know, there's the devil not speaking in tongues too, but his own language. The devil has his own language too. Oh, this is this is gonna help a lot of you guys. I'm just I'm just sure it is. Okay? Because I'm telling you, it's real. We are in the last days. And I'm telling you, you know what, the devil has come to kill, steal, and destroy. He wants to destroy your ministry, he wants to destroy you, he wants to destroy your life. He wants to destroy your relationship with Yeshua Hamashiach, Jesus Christ. He wants to destroy your, con your congregation. He wants your whole, the, everybody to go to hell. That's his plan. Okay? But you, if you really, really want help, if you really need help, you really need a heed to what I'm saying to you. And this is, I'm telling you, this is truth. This is truth I'm telling you. Okay? Okay, in Acts 20, 28, it says, and it, it is written, Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock, over the, wit, over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers, to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. So you're overseers. You're overseers of the congregants. So, I mean, you take this, you take your job very serious because you got you got people following you so which means it's important for you to be an example you be an example for them okay so I, I, I got please hold on because I got other, I got a few more other things that is gonna really help you okay in uh, 1 Corinthians 14 it is written for God is not the author of confusion but of peace as in all churches of the saints Okay, maybe you saying I don't have peace in my church, and that's why I want to, you. You maybe that's why you want to come here. You need to listen to me. Well, I tell you what: if you don't have peace in your church, if you have someone who's trying to control your church, and you feel like you have no control over your church, let me tell you what's going on. More, more than likely, there may must may must be an Ahab or Jezebel spirit in your church. Okay, sometimes it could be the wife, or sometimes it could be the husband. But if it's your wife that's controlling everything and she don't want to come to you with all this gossip, you tell her to be quiet and sit down. And I'm just being real with you. You have to take control. 
First of all, if you don't have control of your family, that's number one. You get control of that situation. Get control of the situation. You need to pinpoint who the culprit is. The one who, the one, the, mainly the one who running to you, telling you everything. More like a, that's the Jezebel spirit. Putting put thoughts in your thoughts in your head, like right, even though you be saying, well, I don't know, I don't know. This is more like the, the Jezebel spirit. You you rebuke that person. Have that person to repent. And if they don't, you get them out of your church. Get them out. And if it's your wife, and if she don't listen to you about you being ahead, you keep her at home. I'm just, I'm just being real with you. You just keep her at home because she, because you have to get control of the church and let God deal with her. Yes, if she, if she don't listen to you about you being ahead. You let God deal with her, but you don't not take her back to church if she gonna be. Being all kind of chaotic, chaotic stuff. Okay, and I've heard situation like this before, where a, a leader wife was was very controlling. But if God called you to preach, then then you then it is your job to make sure there's 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 peace. Okay, and and and, and talk to them about gossip. Talk them about, about gossiping in the church, you know, which is, which I'm, I'm going to do, teach on that next. It's my plan, okay? But, but it's important to make sure that you have control over the church. First of all, you repent to the Lord for by losing control. It's the Lord to guide you, it's the Holy Spirit guide you to help you and to pinpoint the culprit. And it maybe maybe it could, sometimes it could be a male, it could be a woman and a man. It ain't have energy to them, okay? But if it's more than one, you, you need you need to rebuke them, have them to repent, um, and tell them to sit down somewhere. Seriously, but you need to get control of the church, okay? You could be teaching the great sermons, but if you don't have control, if you allow these these busy bodies and these people who want to control you and what you do and how you preach and all this stuff it, it, can, it can get deep and deep and once you let it go so far it's, it's like a pit it's hard to get out of yeah. <laughs> you hear me so so it's important okay all right um proverbs 16 12 it is written it is an abomination to kings to commit wickedness for the throne is established by righteousness. I, I have to ask you this. Do you have women in your church wearing pants? You know, sometimes, I mean, I know you probably say, oh, no, she ain't. I know, yes, I am. I'm going to go there. Okay. Because you know what? Because a lot of times, you know, women need to be wearing dresses and skirts. Okay. They're not the man. They're not the man. Right. They're not the head of the, they're not the head. They need to be put in a place. And I'm being female, and I know how women can be. I've come across all types, okay? And I'm female myself, so I know how women can be. Women can be very controlling, okay? Women can be very intimidating. They could, uh, uh, women can um, threaten a man by not, not having relations with them if he, he don't do what she say. You know, women can be trifling, okay? They can. They can be very trifling. But you being a male, you need to step up and you need to take 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 your place back as a man at the head of the house and head of the sheep, head of the church. Seriously, you need you need to get bold and you need to get a little stern in your voice and in your actions. Not mean, but stern. Now let her know that you mean business. Let your church know you mean business to stop gossiping. And if you lose members because of this, then let them go. It's not about numbers. It's about quality, not quantity. Okay, as long as you're teaching the truth, let them go. And believe me, when all hell break loose, they're going to they be looking for somebody. Well, believe me, they will. They will. Don't worry about them. Then what you do, you pray to God to, to increase and in, to, to bring more, sh more sheep to your fold if this, this, this what you want. And he'll send them too. Believe me, he will. But thing is, so don't worry about losing members. I don't care if it's your mama, your daddy. I don't care if it's your neighbor. I don't care. Let them talk and let them walk. But get control back of your church. 
And if you have deacons sleeping around, s sit them down. They have to be held responsible too. They sleeping around, sit them down. Okay? This is a powerful message, but this is true. This is real. Okay? All right, so I basically cover everything I wanted to cover, seem like. Okay, but I have a, I have a, um, I have a note saying, we have to like people who gossip all the time. They they carry they carry the load of others, you know what I'm saying. So it's important that you don't be part of that preachers, leaders, teachers. Okay, don't worry about what Sam and Lou and all them are doing. But you know what, though? It's important to know if someone is hurting your church. It's important to know the needs of uh, uh, people's needs in the church. It's for clothes and food and shelter, things like that. You know, that's what you'd be concerned about. And, this, and you know, and I would encourage you um, to, have, to have people in your church to, to do other ministry work, like do prison, like visit prisoners, visit the widows. And you see, that would, that would keep them busy, <laughs> a busy body in another, another way, okay? But give them jobs to do, okay? And ask them how many people have they talked to, how, how many people have they, have they ministered to? Okay, your job leaders is to teach people to become disciples. Not for them to just be hanging around 20 years. And that's, that's, not, that's never what the plan. Okay, Jesus went out making disciples. So you go out to make, so your job is to make disciples. Those who are serious about the, about the walk of, about, uh, with Yeshua, you know, they need to be, they can go knock on doors, they can go to the mall and hand out tracts, and they can. Uh, go to the prison, prisoner, prison, and, and uh, speak to prison. They could go visit widows. Um, they could go visit orphans, orphanages. I mean, there are jobs for the for the ministry. There's that's ministerial jobs that need to be done. Okay, your job with, with the tithing and when, once you pay the bills and um, in the in the church, that money should be going for Bibles and for tracts and. Um, to feed people, things like that, blankets for the homeless, um, or maybe another building. Um, you know, ask God, God, you know, but you always pray about things like that, though. Okay, about buildings and things like that. You know, ask God to direct you. Ask Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit direct me. Yes, get them, get your church busy doing jobs. They need to work. Okay, the ministry is about work. It's not about just sitting there and gossiping and saying, "Oh, I know she ain't got. I know she didn't run at the church." And I, no, church is not about that. And if you got women in your church that's showing her they breasts and all that, tell them to cover it up. Tell them you don't want to see it. And you, if you married, if you're not married, preacher, and if you're a male, you need to get married. You, you, you need to, you need to. If, if, if you are lusting after the women in the church, get married. As, as the Holy Spirit for a person for you, as the Lord to show you, yes. Just because you then I need now. I'm gonna say this now. Just because that you your eyes go to the attractive ones. If God see you one that's not attractive, you you don't deny the person. It's a reason why God send you up with that person. It's because that person is what you need to get the church really going. Okay. So don't be foolish. Don't be foolish. Well, this blessed me even. I pray it blessed you. Okay? May God keep you. May His light shine upon you. May He give you His peace. Peace in your heart. Peace in your life. Peace in your church. Peace in your house. Shalom.